I accidentally locked him out, and it's happened like two more times after <gasps> that. Where <laughs> is Hello, everyone. I feel like when it comes to love, everyone is a big fan of just the topic of love. There are songs, poems, and countless Instagram accounts dedicated to these quotes. I actually have a lot of these quotes saved when I'm feeling like mushy gushy. But I feel like, you know, between falling in love and breaking out, there's so many small moments in between from like the goofy, the sentimental. But today we're going to be talking about the stupid yet infuriating moments. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Like those stupid little fights you get with with your partner like right before bed and you wake up being like, what the heff? Like what the heff? What the, what the hell? Hef? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell and what the f? Right? Because yes. you're like, why do we? What do we? What are we fighting about? Why do I feel like shit? But you guys still choose each other. But you're like, why are we fighting about this dumb thing? Yes, we're talking about those stupid fights that can also get really intense sometimes, mm-hmm. right? And we're gonna share our personal experiences with some of these fights, um, and how we resolve them, or maybe how they're still ongoing. Mm. Uh, keep in mind that we have cleared these with our significant others. Maybe. I guess we'll see where the conversation Maybe. takes us. Maybe. Janet. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Okay. Yes. Hopefully no surprises here. Hopefully but, no surprises. Um, before we jump into our personal deep arguments that we've gotten into with our significant others, we're going to bring up some silly things that couples often mm-hmm. argue about and see if we can relate to them. Okay. Okay. So I have a list here that I will read through. And if there is one that you can relate to, just shout it out and let us know. All right. So the first one here, work boundaries. When one person consistently works late and misses dinners or weekends or brings work into bed, answering emails when it should be cuddle time, you know, stuff like that. No, I don't. Really? We have boundaries. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think it's for for me and Ray, it's more like when it's like relaxing time, like phones away. Maybe you're playing mm. your like mobile games. That's fine. <laughs> I was playing from mobile games. I'm playing my mobile, my mobile games. Yeah. So the games are okay. Yeah. It's not work related. Yeah. Okay. I haven't, we haven't had like formal fights, but I've definitely gotten looks from him where I know oh. like, because, well, and it's like, he's mm. not saying anything, but I just catch myself. Like we'll be, I don't know, watching TV or something. And then suddenly I'll like take out my phone and then he'll be like, <clears throat> mm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of a little hint yeah i think for me and philip we like to scroll on social media um in our bed so it's not really work related because we work in the same industry and i think generally we understand that we're not working nine to five jobs and sometimes work emails or slack or texts come in in the middle of the night so we will be on our phones and we're totally okay with that it's more like the social media scrolling in bed Mm -hmm. and i think the issue is that we try to go to bed at the same time but my shower and my face routine takes longer than him (laughs) Mm -hmm. so he's already in bed and he's getting his scrolls in he's catching up on the news twitter instagram Mm. whatever and by the time i come into bed he starts to like put his phone away and starts to like shimmy over to me and i'm just like (laughs) (laughs) i'm still scrolling i need like at least five minutes so there's a time limit for me Mm. because he wants to cuddle which i think is really cute and he only cuddles for like a little bit and he rolls over to the other side but this is the time where he's like we should just end the night together Mm. and it's it's hard for me too because that's also my mindless scrolling time yeah so we definitely have talked about it and i think one of the solutions is which we haven't implemented yet is to sit in our chairs and finish scrolling before going (laughs) into your chair (laughs) yeah i have a suggestion Yes. Do it when you're in the bathroom, like doing as part of your like, you know, getting True. ready routine. And no, that she already more... takes forever, though, in the bathroom. True. Well, yeah. <laughs> like I want to sit in a comfortable space. So the, when you're on the toilet, I think the last I mean, after a shower, I don't want to sit on the toilet. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, I, we're going to try the sitting in the chair situation and see if that works out. But um, that is one thing that we definitely have talked about. Mm. Checking phones at dinner. No, no. What? <laughs> Same. Um, OK, correct way to load the dishwasher. I don't use a dishwasher. (laughs) Yeah, this is, I usually don't when it's just me. Now with my significant other, he does use the dishwasher a lot. So for the first time I am like loading it. I I am so, I'm just not good at it. I'm not like, he is so good at like figuring out the positions and stuff. You would think, right? Like, I'm like, how are you loading this dishwasher? Like on top? Well, here's the thing, because like, I always feel like it's hard to load. Like we either have like too many bowls or too many plates because the stuff on the bottom is like designed for plates, right? Sure. And then you're supposed to put the sure. bowls like in the <laughs> because he, because he says like the water comes from the bottom, so you don't want anything on the bottom that covers that's like too big of a thing. It needs to be like because the water jets come from the bottom. Girl, I don't know. I don't use. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know but, that. It yeah, does. yeah. There's it, so then if you put a bowl over that, then it won't like go up to like clean. I the put top all items. my big bowls on the bottom though. 
and it cleans. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I also use mine as a drying rack, so I don't know. Ah, okay. that's my that's that's my purpose of my dishwasher. So yeah. I think if it's a drying rack, then how it loads is okay, right? Because it's just gonna mm, dry. Interesting. But. Um, hairs in the shower or sink? No. But I, keep, I don't live with my partner, so it's probably... Mm, and I also true. have this habit. Every time I shower and wash my hair, I always take it out. Oh, that's it's my a good own habit. It's mm. a good habit. That's how you avoid clogs. I already know Helen's answer. You know why? <laughs> because we were just at her house yesterday, and I looked over in the shower. I was like, go. <laughs> <laughs> actually, so he he actually clears my hair out of the shower. It's a lot now. of hair, dude. It's I know. I shed a lot. I think with pregnancy, like your hair is just... Half your hair is gone. But he actually clears my hair out of the shower. I will say that the one thing... It's not really... The hair that is bothersome it's the squeegeeing that uh, we argue about oh yeah yeah i don't know if any you both have like clear glass showers yeah. but growing up i never i had a frosted glass shower and then throughout college in my various condos it was all curtain yeah. so i was never used to squeegeeing and the one time the philip was like oh can you buy a squeegee i was like oh for the car that's nice you want to wash the car <laughs> he's like no it's for the shower so he started squeegeeing. He asked me to squeegee when I was the last to shower because Sorry, obviously squeegee the is a funny word. <laughs> squirter with like the water droplets, it, it like stays on there if you don't. Yeah, yeah. California stay. hard water, wa- water, water <laughs> is really, really bad. So oh. I started squeegeeing um, for a little bit. But when we first moved into our house, I was also pregnant. So I would be squeegeeing. Oh, I'd be going like up and down, up and down. And then I would be sweating. Yeah, out of breath. Afterwards. Because yeah. I like hot showers. And afterwards, yeah. I'd be sweating. Oh, like, yeah, why yeah, am I yeah. doing this and re- re-showering again? And yeah. then re-squeegeeing yeah. again? It didn't make sense. <laughs> endless cycle. It was an endless cycle. So I stopped squeegeeing for that reason. I think it's but excusable when you're, you're pregnant. pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. yeah, well, I still don't do it. <laughs> I'm not pregnant now. So. I, it's hard. I feel like we t- we talked about this too. Is it, so squeegeeing, squeezing, whatever. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, I've never used that word as in like an act, a verb. I was a yeah. verb. Um, but I think Ray and I like, I started squeegeeing. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I did not know the word. I do it though. Yeah. But I also do it because my, my, my house at home, my brother, my family, we have a new glass shower glass shower. so shower. he yes. makes me do it so it's the habit i built up mm-hmm. it's also because like i did have to remove the water stains and once i removed it i was like i don't want to be doing this all the time yeah. so mm-hmm. i started squeegeeing ray knows that so he always squeegees after oh. but another trick though is because i shower first and i go are you coming in after he's like yes i was like okay i'm not gonna squeegee yeah so if you're coming in right I, after so if you're the first you don't to shower. i always try to shower first for that reason yeah, yeah. i have i have the shower curtain so uh, but if I ever get a, a glass one, I guess this is the future that this I will be doing future. With This it. is your future, yes. Are those all the things for the couples fight about? Those are the main things that couples fight about. Oh, wow. I only want to hear about your specific fights now. Because obviously, mm. I know your partners, and this is what the listeners want to hear about. I was like, what are you, what, what, yeah, what's your latest fights? Ooh, we're getting juicy here. I'm surprised we haven't actually, no, I'm not surprised because new relationships. Yep. And now mm. we can actually talk about this. But I was going to say, I'm surprised we haven't talked about this in the past. Yeah. Yeah. So Janet, you go We're first. We're gonna do it now. Okay, <laughs> oh, yeah, I get to go first. Janet, Janet. Oh, okay. Okay. Where's my popcorn? Um, well, I was thinking like we haven't gotten to like um, really a disagreement in a while. It's been like a pretty calm two weeks, right? Also, keep in mind that. <laughs> well, wait. Let me let me Sorry. explain. We just moved in together like a month and a half ago. Oh. So okay. when you're living together in a new space and you went through a huge move where you're like figuring out where you want to lay every mm-hmm. like lay out the furniture and all that kind of stuff, there's a lot to kind of like butt heads about. Yeah. Um. So the last two weeks have been calm. But the last time that we had a disagreement was around like furniture and the move. Specifically, it was about getting more furniture. Mm. But mm. I, I'm like trying to, it's like, you know, when you get in these fights and you're like, what was it really about? Because it kind of like goes from one thing to the next yeah, yeah, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it started because I have a workspace and right now there's like a bunch of stuff in there and he has a workspace and right now there's a bunch of stuff in there. Basically, we realized that we have... We're like halfway moved in and then half like still trying to figure out where, you know, certain things are going to go. Things like we have a cooler for when we host, you, you know, have like a a place where you can put drinks. We don't want to put it out on the patio because it'll get dirty. Mm -hmm. So it's temporarily in my workspace. Mm -hmm. I got up one morning and I was like, oh, I'm going to try to like reorganize my workspace. Take it and I put it out into the living room. And I put it out there because like there was something else there. And then I went away for the weekend. I came back and that was gone. The living room also was clean because he cleaned it. He comes in and he's like, hey, uh, so I just like cleaned the living room and cleared all this. Like, why is this out here? Mm. I was like, I need to like clear the space because like I have to work and all this stuff. And he's like, well, but why don't we then find like let's buy furniture to put stuff away, right? So that Mm -hmm. we're not just like moving things around back and forth in each other's rooms. And I was like, okay, but then like I don't like my room is already small enough. If I get furniture, I feel like I couldn't visualize something that would hold a cooler and be aesthetic. (laughs) So I was like resisting it. So I was like, no, I feel like maybe we can put it 
it in the closet over here. And he's like, no, if we do that. So we got into this thing and then mm. he was like, fine, I'll keep it in my space. And I'm like, no, don't do that because now you're going to be like, it's like you, you it took one for the team and, and then you're going to hold a grudge. I was like, yep. I don't want you to have to do that. Yep. Wait, yeah. who's cooler is it though? His cooler. If it's his it's cooler, cool. it should Put be it okay. in his space. It's, right. It should be okay in his space. But here's like, here's the argument that he kind of used last time we talked about the other items that we have. So he do, most of the stuff that we have is his, but I use it. And it's the cooler. Use the cooler? We use the cooler when you guys came over for dinner to like Once. Sorry. <laughs> Not to, sorry, I was like <laughs> But like but to the point is like I've benefited from all the times that okay, we, got it, got we it. have it, sure, right? So yeah. it it like it makes sense. But um yeah, I don't know. That turned into a conversation about the furniture. And he's like, look, let's get something, you know. And I was, like, resisting the furniture because I was like, I don't know. It's not going to be aesthetic. Yeah. And it was kind of back and forth. At the end, the conclusion was, okay, I was being stupid. Yes, we can definitely invest in furniture to store things. I'm just used to being minimal, right? I'm just trying to understand yeah, what the- furniture you're getting to store it, though. What for- oh, yeah, like some sort of shelfing or for something. Cooler? Sorry. For cooler? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you can put it on a top shelf? Well, you know what I mean. Like bigger, I don't know. Bigger items we're gonna have to store. Like I have to get some sort of shelving, like outdoor, sort of... outdoor furniture. Either, either that or. But I think okay. I was just resisting to buying any more stuff. Yes. I think yes, that yes. was the main okay. like argument. And he was yes. like, "When you start to accumulate things, you need to buy ways to properly store it." Right. I agree. Yeah. So like vertical yeah. storage or something. Yeah. Different. Yes. I would say to put in a plastic bag for now and put it outside. I don't think you plastic need a cooler bag. in your room. It's uh, we would have to put it in a trash bag. I guess we could do that. Because you're never going to use it. I feel like it's not a cool. We actually have used it like three or four times already. No. You don't use your fridge? We do, we do. But when we, <laughs> no, but just... when you host, you have like it's for like the drinks, right? <laughs> How many times have you hosted without us? A couple times. <laughs> oh. You guys, if you would come to the West Side, <laughs> I left ten minutes away for you. I don't get an invite. Dang. Okay. Interesting though. I feel yeah. like that's a very specific thing. Even with the cooler, it is like aesthetically like. It's ugly. It's it's not something that you usually keep in the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's hard because it's... That was yeah, one yeah. example, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I like, you two moved into a condo together and there's not enough space. So it is yeah, it, yeah, it is yeah, yeah. something that I think a lot of people deal with, like storage and where to put things yeah. and how yeah. much usage are you getting out of it. So very understandable. And also, you both have not been together for that long. So mm. moving in together so quickly, how many months was it before you moved in together? Like Five or six, I Five think. Five or six yeah. months Ooh. since they said hello. Like, that is <laughs> really, really quick. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that I'm sure are coming up. And I'm not surprised when you say two weeks. It's been quiet for two weeks. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. That's yeah. Good. There's a lot to, I mean, I would say it's all been, like, constructive. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, when I say it's not, at the end, it wasn't about the cooler, right? It's, like, a difference of he's accustomed to living mm-hmm. in a space and having proper storage. And I'm just used to always being a minimalist. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's... Yeah. What about you ladies? I want to hear about your discussion. I'm like, do we go to the vet- on that? I'm like, do you go to the veteran or one of the newbies? <laughs> Who do you want, huh? Who do you want? Let's start with the new. Okay, so my fight is pertaining to the morning shower or the morning routine. So my morning routine is like very sacred to me. And it's been changing a little bit. Like for so in the mornings I like to like I go to the gym, I come back, I take a warm shower and I play like a podcast that's like self helpy. And then I like put some like I literally type in peaceful piano music on my spotify mm. and then i play that and then i like meditate and then i like journal very like a serene morning mm-hmm. one day ray was over in the morning and he and i was walking past him in the kitchen and i said i'm gonna take a quick shower he's like i'm making breakfast i was like oh cool i'm gonna go upstairs and do my thing i go upstairs i'm in my zone i'm washing my hair and like the, the water is running and my water pressure is loud mm-hmm. playing my freaking podcast all of a sudden i hear this knock 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 on my damn door <laughs> And I'm just like, huh? And I hear it, the knock, and, you go, and I hear this. Sound. <laughs> I'm just like, and I'm like washing. Like, I can't hear anything. So I'm just like, and I go, what? Like, you're trying to, like, <laughs> you're trying to be polite. I'm getting worked up just hearing about So I'm like washing my hair. And I'm just like, I'm saying, what? And then he mumbles again. I can't hear him. And I'm just, Yeah, it's loud when yeah. you're showering. Right. And then I'm like getting slowly, like, my calmness and peacefulness is escaping me. And I turn on, I had a turn off my damn shower and i go i'm trying to calm myself like no sorry let me you had to turn off the water i turn off the damn water so you could hear him i could hear it so he's not like but i'd be annoyed if i had to do that because now you're like well is the water gonna have to reheat when i turn it back on no no, i had to like with my wet finger like fess pause my (laughs) stupid podcast and i was like damn and then i open the door i go yeah and he goes breakfast is almost done and i was like cool (laughs) i already know you're thinking like that's so kind. He's making breakfast for you. And I was like, totally get that. But the thing is, like, as I walked past him prior to showering, I said, he said, I'm making breakfast. I was like, cool. Noted. I got it. Mm. So it's like, you don't have to tell me when breakfast is done. 
I'm going to go downstairs and see it, that it's complete. <laughs> and you can always just, I always have my phone in the bathroom. Yeah. Mm. You could text me. I checked my phone. I was like, you could just text me. And so afterwards, I was like, thanks. Close the door and I go, <laughs> oh my God. I was like trying to get my peace again. And so I, so I, here I am trying to like get all calm and shit, play my peaceful music, meditate. I'm still a little like irked. Yeah. So then afterwards, I go downstairs with my like my my towel wrapped up in my head. And I go, "Hey, babe." He's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Can I talk to you about something?" He's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Next time, can you not bother me when I'm having my shower?" And I said, "It's because it's really sacred for me in the morning. It's like my time." And like I like explain like why versus mm-hmm. like I'm just telling you breakfast is done. Mm-hmm. But I think it was kind of like an awkward moment. He was like, "Okay." And then afterwards, I was like, "Man, that's not like a bitch." Like. <laughs> I feel really bad. My man's making me breakfast. I'm just like, don't yeah, your man's bug. making you breakfast, girl, in the morning. Just kidding. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. I have a story yeah. to follow up on. Shower is like my time, yes. dude. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm you listening. are very sacred about your morning. Yeah, I'm listening yeah. to Jay Shetty talk about like gut health and stuff. Yeah. Like I didn't even know this stuff. <laughs> so that was like a stupid fight. Because then after I was like, I'm sorry if I have my own things. And anyways, we're fine now. He understands it's my time. Mm. Yeah. Um, but that was what. Yeah, that was a dumb fight. I That's had. so funny. I can totally relate to that because when I was like just just had a baby the only sacred moment that i had was also in the oh, shower. shower time so i totally know what you mean when you you're showering it's loud i have my music playing sometimes i'm watching netflix like i put my phone in the little soapbox yeah, 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 which yeah. works and you can actually watch tv in the shower yeah, yeah. and you hear a knock and then it's just like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and i'm like what <laughs> What? Yeah. What do you want? And for him, he's like, why are you screaming? I was like, I can't, can't hear, hear you. you. Yeah. I can't hear you. And he'll come in and be like, baby's awake. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you wow, yeah. go? I thank you for telling me, but I will be down in 10 minutes. Yeah. And he'll be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for us in that moment of shower. It's like saying... I am Asian. <laughs> like, or like, I'm a boy. Or just making a statement. Yeah, no, You're like, no, like, like, that's what? nice. Sorry, it's like, it's like in Joey says in French, it's like a moo point. You're like, cool, bro. Moo point, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. even know this. <laughs> but I also get alerts on my phone for when a sound mm, is detected. Yes. So, and I watch it. I'm like, okay, he's awake. I'm going to rush yeah. my shower. And I hear it. Boom, boom, boom. Go get him. Yeah. Oh. I don't get alert when breakfast is done, but like, <laughs> <laughs> you can just text me, you know? But yeah, these are the little, I think because these are more habitual things that sometimes mm, when you yeah. like adjust to a new partner, they're like, oh, they're not familiar with. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. There have been many times I've cried in the shower because of that. And I'm just like, Aww. I literally can't get five minutes. So, um, but now he knows not to bother me or to mm. text me because I have my phone on me. So yeah. yeah, he'll text me if he needs That's me. Nice. If like yeah. dinner's ready. And sometimes they feel good after they cook. So they're like, yes. oh, you know, while it's hot, with you, you know, yeah. so they have the best intentions. Okay. I will tell my story. Yes. Uh, okay, so the last time we got into an argument, Philip and I, we went to Boston for my grandma's 90th birthday. Aww. And every time I go back home, I always hit up my home friends and we just have a blast. Like we get dinner together, we catch up, and then we go <laughs> out to the bar or to the club. Why are you laughing? I just could see where this story is heading. <laughs> and I feel like, because I think I heard, him, I heard him passing Phil's like, oh yeah, Boston. I was like, oh, what happened in Boston? <laughs> well, this is the story. It, it, it's, it's funny because like in LA, we don't go clubbing anymore, right? Oh, we don't sad, go yeah. crazy. And then same with my Boston friends. I I think there's a part of us that when we get together, this dormant part of us that is buried under adult responsibilities, mm. like that comes out when we are together, mm, me and yeah, my home friends. Really so it's sense. a really, it's a really fun time. So that particular night, my parents were like, okay, don't worry in the morning. We've got your baby. Go out, have fun with your friends, catch up with them. And for any parents out there, y'all know that is the moment to let loose and have fun. Yeah, yeah. So we go to dinner. It's a pretty fancy restaurant. We get shots. <laughs> <laughs> as you do <laughs> as you do you get tequila shots right and we had multiple rounds of tequila shots oh, man. Oh, and then I after dinner <laughs> we walk over to a club where one of our friends was DJing DJ Jesse Jess he was DJing so we went there and every time I go home like my friends we love to buy each other shots it's just rounds on rounds on rounds and oh, no one stops because everyone uh, wants to put in yeah, a round it's your way yeah, of yeah. like taking care of each other or welcoming you back exactly kind of yes yeah. so we were drinking a lot and then EDM started playing so I was like alright let's go downstairs and there was another bar downstairs so we went downstairs and there was hip hop throwback music oh, man, so yeah. good our jam pony genuine TLC ushered like all the good yeah. all the good songs and I was feeling myself I started dancing <laughs> 
<laughs> Why do I laugh? Okay, of course, yeah, he dancing. I was dancing, and then I don't, I don't imagine this when I think of Helen dancing. Oh, I imagine it other... wasn't like that at all. Okay. She needs more space. This yeah. is too, yeah. too combined right now. Yes. So one of my friend, a friend of a friend, like this girl I didn't know, she started grabbing my hand, and she started, you know, when like she one of your friends to, grabs your hand and you start dancing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, let's go. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden you start going crazy. Like my hair was going all over the place. My like ass was all the way up and then all the way down. Like it was just, I was, I think I created a little circle around me. And I was just, I was just letting loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, your, your ass is up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a great description. My visual was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Though when you're like ass is everywhere. <laughs> I really don't know, but I guess I do. We know when Helen's ass is everywhere. We can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, go ahead. Oh okay, so <laughs> your ass. All right, so your ass is everywhere. And yeah, then your what ass is everywhere. You're creating a circle around yourself. <laughs> oh my god. Where's your husband? <laughs> He didn't get mad at you for that, right? This okay, well, oh God, here we go. <laughs> so we were dancing, and then I think I like, <laughs> God, I'm crying. I think I like ass chucked Philip. <laughs> Wait, how? It's like I, I started like backing it up into him, <laughs> and then he like flew back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> sorry. Oh my God. Oh, I need a so he can handle it, right? So then I think it was already like 2 a.m. And Philip goes, all right, Helen, all right. And I'm just like, what? Because <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for someone to just be like, all right, like yeah. maybe it's yeah, time it's to tone it down a little bit. Yeah. I like it literally sucked the life out of me. Oh. And I got mad yeah. <laughs> because I was just having such a good time. So I told my friends, I'm like, OK, um, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> And then I grab him, and we stand outside the girls' bathroom, which is where I think all talks, all uh, talks happen. Serious, yeah, talks, yeah, yeah. yeah the serious talks the happen. Yeah. So I was like asking him, you know, do I look bad? Like, am, I, am I, am I dancing too hard? Um, am I embarrassing you? Uh -huh. So, um, well, my mascara is running now. Um, but Philip was like. I mean, no, it's 2 a.m. We have to go home soon. Just being like very, I think we were on different levels as well. I think mm. after having given birth, like my tolerance is very low now. Yeah, yeah. I get drunk very quickly. So alcohol was definitely in the mix. I was very emotional. I started crying and he was just like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he was very calm about it. And he just kept talking to me like, "What? why, why are you feeling this way? And we got the, to the core of it, which is that after having my child, I realized that I hadn't had a moment to ever feel the level of confidence mm. and the level of sexiness that yeah, I had felt yeah. on that dance floor. And for me to feel that and for someone to be like, <laughs> all right, that's enough. Yeah, that's yeah. enough. I was just like, what? Like, don't um, you, you took me out of my zone. Yeah. So it was definitely a more deep rooted argument mm. or a feeling that I had than yeah. just like, Helen, it's time to go home. You know, because I think any other time I'd been like, oh, yeah, like, let's go home. Let's keep drinking somewhere else. Mm. But I was just um, taken aback there. That is the last um, deep argument or big argument that we we had. And I think it was a good one because then he's always been like, I want to understand mm -hmm. what you're going through, yeah. what you're physically going through, what you're mentally going through. He's always been very, very supportive of me, this like post-pregnancy phase and um, just wanting to be there to support me. So I think this just came out of left field where I was like not having and I was really upset about it. But it was a good thing because now he understands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't understand that feeling. Like, I think when you're in like, I'm I'm feeling myself yeah, and you need to have yeah. that cut short. You're like, what the F? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think especially like you said, with all the changes that you've gone through this year, like it's if it's the first time that you're kind of starting to feel back to yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I just see you feel me like throw it out. Like, the, the I have a visual too. I like see it as a gift in my head. <laughs> so we can laugh about this now. No. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I'm sure in the moment you were like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like you felt really like hurt. Yeah, I, and I did. And we laugh about it now because I ass chucked him and then he got <laughs> mad at me. Also new so word in my vocab, ass chuck. I, did... <laughs> I want to see that in person now. <laughs> yeah. Why is it so hard to find a good doctor? There's nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment expecting to have their full attention and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and better places to be. Instead of listening to you intently, asking how you feel and helping you along, the doctor is trying to rush you out. Trust me, I've been there and it's such a waste of time. On ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. No 
No more Dr. Roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient-reviewed and fits their needs and scheduled just right. Go to ZocDoc.com ABG and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find a book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash A-B-G. ZocDoc dot com slash A-B-G. Thank you for sharing those stories. I think I have... I'm sorry. I'm going to be laughing for a while with that one. <laughs> I know. My makeup's like all messed up now. But do you guys have any like ongoing like silly like arguments that always come up with your partner? Like ongoing ones. Mm-hmm. I have two to share. I guess okay. I'll start with one where I feel really bad about. Um, so I've shared that, you know, I have never lived with a dog before. Mm. Now I'm living with the dog. Our wonderful Toby is like... It's like his little child, and now it's like my my child. Um, so having not lived with the dog before, there's like certain habits that mm. you have to really shift, right? So there was one night when uh, we had first kind of started dating, and uh, we were in his like apartment in Santa Monica. It's a smaller space, one bedroom. Anyone who has been in like smaller apartments uh, in a city setting knows that the fire alarm goes off really easily, right? Mm-hmm. So I was just using the stove, like cooking something. Suddenly the fire alarm was like blaring and it's like super loud and it freaks out the dog and everyone, you know, so I was like, oh my God, I'm like kind of panicking. And I remember like because his unit's kind of small, I've seen him sometimes open the door mm-hmm. like to let kind of the air in. Yeah. So I did that. But when he does it, he uses like a larger box uh-huh. to keep the door open so that the dog can't get out. Mm-hmm. I didn't think about this because I've never thought of having like a creature that's just yeah, going to yeah. be wandering. I put a shoe down. <laughs> so <laughs> it does the job. It keeps the door open, right? And of course, yeah. everyone in this, you know, we're like trying to figure out like, oh my God, the fire alarm's going off. We're doing this. Yeah. So, so the both of us are like, and then finally the fire alarm like stops and everything's fine. And we're like, oh, and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. He's like, it's okay. We're we'll just leave the door open and let thing. So we go back to the couch and we like watch TV and we like eat our food. Like an hour or two goes by. Right. Uh-huh. Um, and oh, wait, let me backtrack. And like about 30 minutes and we're like, okay, it's like fine enough. Now I close the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like an hour and a half to, to maybe, it might've been like three hours that gone by. No, mm, maybe two hours. It's, it was a long time. Okay. And suddenly he's like, where's Toby? And I was like, oh, shit. oh, I don't know. Maybe he's like in the bedroom. So we started looking in the bedroom. He's not in the bedroom. Is he in the closet? Back into the kitchen. And his face is only so big. We're like, oh my God, where did the dog go? No. Uh-huh. Turns out. I accidentally locked him out of the apartment and I felt so bad. And Eugene, like when he, when we realized like we couldn't find him, he was like freaking out. He goes out into the hallway and he's like looking everywhere. And the moment he's out of the apartment, I'm still looking in the apartment. And I just had this moment where I was like, this man loves this dog so much. If I, if something happened to this dog because of me, he will definitely break up with me or it's going to become a huge, or I'm going to feel so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so thank God he found Toby. He was like just down the hall, but he had been locked out for like two to three hours outside. And he's like, he's like, you should have seen his face when I found him. He was like in panic mode. I just felt so, so bad. Um, and it's happened like two more times after that. <gasps> Where did? Wait, well, okay, what? Let me, let me explain. Let me explain. No, no, no. But different scenarios. Like, um, like so. Of course, now whenever like there's a fire alarm, like I always like keep the door. But now it's like now we have a patio, which I've never had before. Also, yeah. where we can let the dog go out. Yeah. One time we opened out. I think we went out to get something, and then I closed it. I didn't. He also didn't notice. And then when we were back in the living room. He's like. Why is Toby outside? <laughs> He's like oh, okay. jumping over here in the window. I was like, Aww. oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then the third time was our closets, big walk in closets. Oh, you just locked him in the closet. And I just yeah. locked yeah. him in the closet. I don't, but it's like he doesn't notice these things when they're happening either. It's just mm. like he thinks to check. And I, so I'm getting better at it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. that one, that one is is my fault. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll move on to someone else before I can change. Yeah. Toby's like, just having alone time. You <laughs> Toby know? is a quiet dog when, so once he's settled in, though. Yeah. He's not like a loud, yeah. yappy dog. He is, and he that's is true. like such a yapping if, if he's outside or being he locked doesn't. in a closet. And then. that's the thing is like he gets, he just gets kind of like scared. And that's what I feel even worse because he is such a, like he's such a good dog and he doesn't get like rowdy or noisy and Mm. and so I just it makes me feel even worse that Mm -hmm. there's like he just he's just like why am I in the dark I don't know I'm just gonna chill you know and I'm like ah okay dang that's hard that's hard to take Mm -hmm. on such a big responsibility yeah yeah. I know yes but (laughs) but sounds like you're getting used to it getting used to it and uh I understand his perspective too and these and to be fair like he was like look I'm not angry at you I know this is new for everyone but it's like imagine if you if someone just like you know, your kid, and then it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it happens like three times. And mm-hmm. he's been patient, but it was like, look, I'm not angry at you. I'm just, I am like emotionally involved in the situation right now that he yeah, is yeah, like, yeah. you know, is he okay? That so, makes sense. <sighs> yes. 
But adjustment. Anybody who's adjusting to that, I feel you. Please let me know I'm not alone. <laughs> what about you ladies? What's a, what is it? Is there a reoccurring thing? Well, for me, actually, it's not like an ongoing fight between the both of us. It's more like a habit thing he does that annoys mm. me. And then I already talked to him about it before this this uh, this recording. And he was like, I don't do that. And I was like, Ooh, okay. tell <laughs> so us. whenever we're eating, I feel like I always hear him chew. Uh, and I always say like, oh, it's because you have a bigger mouth. It's okay <laughs> that you have more surface to <laughs> fucked up, dude. <laughs> It's true. Oh. So I, I don't know. Wait, you think the size of his mouth correlates to his chewing? Girl, I don't know. I'm giving excuses to him, okay? <laughs> I don't know. But I, I hear it sometimes. And it maybe because mm. things are really tasty. Or sm- and I think maybe because I got called out on this before that I now notice when other people are doing it. Mm. Ah. And, and I'm, the- Wait, isn't that like a double insult, though? You're yeah. like, yeah, you chew loud and your mouth is, is big. <laughs> That's how I kind of like you wrap have my a, head around. No, you chew loud because your mouth is big. <laughs> That is, a, that is a key difference. I don't know. But then I was like, sometimes I'll be like, I noticed it. And I'll be like, oh, I kind of hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's so annoyed. It. So sweet when she just, oh. Yeah, and I'll be like, yo, I hear you. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. sometimes I'm like, you're just enjoying the feeling. I get it. And like, then I asked myself, like, am I chewing loud? Mm. I don't know. But then I was telling him about He's like, I don't chew loud. He's like, I don't think I'm chewing loud. I was like, okay. He's, and I was Have like, you ever tried to record it so he, so just he can so hear rude. it? It's like, yeah. I get this. <laughs> but I don't know. Just for me, it's more like just something. It's like a habit thing or something I noticed mm. that I mean, like that gets on your nerves. Be like little bit. reminders. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for me, I'm just like I gotta let it go. Mm-hmm. And but he also believes that he doesn't do it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. if It's just like okay. Well, we're getting lunch soon. So oh, I feel bad. <laughs> no, I feel no, bad. No, no. Well, does Phil have anything that that he does? Or do he you does anything? also at the uh, dinner table or oh. eating table. So one thing that happens to him while he eats is that his nose gets very sensitive wait mm. me too like allergies too? no like it gets very drippy oh spicy oh food. eugene mm. has that regular too, food so. oh so oh. after every meal i don't know if you've ever noticed but he has to blow his nose after every meal okay <laughs> it was just fine um and i didn't know this at first but he gets like two to three tissues i'm still laughing for the last thing that i talked about um so two to three tissues and he will blow his nose and he will cover his nose so it's all enclosed but he will put his head down and blow his nose. And at one point, I looked at him and I was like, wait, your nose is still facing the table where the food is. Like, can you turn your head? So I think it wasn't until like years later that I noticed it and I made that comment. Mm. And he was just like, wait, what? Like, it's all enclosed. It's fine. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. This, that's rude, dude. There's food on the table and your nose is facing the food. It's like, no, it's facing my lap. It's facing the food. <laughs> you know, so directionally move your head. And so... <laughs> So he does now, but sometimes he forgets because I think it's just a habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I blow my nose at the table too. But do you turn your? Mel's head just away thinking from about the do food? I do all of these I don't know. Things? I totally. I don't know. I think it's totally okay. You just have. I just you just have to turn your head. Yeah, just turn yeah, your yeah. head. I don't know. I'm always at boogers, <laughs> so I don't fucking know. Um, but yeah, there are times where I will also just be like, hmm, you know, <laughs> like, like touch his lap a little bit, and he'll be like, oh, okay, okay. So he gets yeah. it. It's funny. So I don't know if you did you talk to Phil about yours? You didn't mention this. I told Ray. Ray's like, oh, you can speak your truth. And I was like, I think I'm going to give them an opportunity to talk about like their side of the story one yeah, day. So yeah, so we yeah. are going to have a round table discussion Hopefully, with our one significant day. others. Hopefully They can soon. defend themselves. And Philip also said, this is not fair. You are basically roasting us and we <laughs> can't defend ourselves, which well, is true. Yeah. But it's our podcast. So <laughs> yeah, you we'll give them chance. that opportunity later to um, talk about this. I mean, there are things that I do also that annoy him. I'll give some quick examples. Um, cord folding or, oh yeah, mm. you know, that is one thing where I used to just take the coil and um like roll around my hand so that there's this imaginary circle whatever <laughs> air between your cord i don't know how do you how do you explain this anyway i used to just do that and he showed me that the coil has a certain bend to it so you <laughs> twist it in a certain way that it naturally <laughs> coils around and then you you know tie it together and that's how you huh. you know maintain the longevity of the cord and all of that and shit like that like, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> we'll have phil say the rest in person yeah yeah. Damn. I feel like I should kind of roast you, Gina, because the last thing that I talked about was around me. You don't have to roast yeah. him. <laughs> I mean, Jay, you don't have to roast him. We don't have to go yeah, there. No, <laughs> I mean, is there something? So this is something that Eugene does that he outwardly addresses and knows about. Um, so I feel like I can't really be angry at him for it, but he has a tendency to leave drawers and cabinets 
open. Ooh. Sorry. So this, <laughs> that's a no. Mm-hmm. So, it, but, and to be fair, so like, okay, here's the example, right? So like the third time he like cooked for me, maybe, I was in the kitchen with him. And so he's like running around the kitchen doing all this stuff. And suddenly he stops and, and he notices that I'm just like walking behind him, like closing drawers, closing out his closing drawers. But he's like doing all the work. Like yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. cooking, he's cutting, he's doing everything. And then I'm just like going behind and closing everything. He's like, oh, yeah, sorry. That's like something that it's like a, just a habit of mine. Mm. I kind of like rush from one thing to the other. So I was like, ha ha, no worries. Um, <laughs> and honestly, it's actually something that I've, because he like called it out himself and so early. And I'm like, look, if you're going to do all the actual work and all I have to do is like kind of like the cleanup of yeah, some yeah, things, yeah. then I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess, I don't know if that's, that's like a... It is, that, yeah, that, that, yeah. It's dangerous because sometimes you can't see and then you hit your head on like uh. an open cabinet. So yeah, it's good that you followed him because he might have hurt himself. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, Sorry. it is a it's a unique habit. It's a silly. It's a, that's a silly one. Yeah, yeah. silly habit. But, I, but I, I, if I were Jay, I would be like, hmm. I just walk behind him, and every time I'm in the room, if I were Eugene, I'd be annoyed. I'd be like, <laughs> that's true. I had that open because I wanted to even go back in. Get out of oh. my kitchen. Yeah, actually, yeah. that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is mm-hmm. true too. So we've talked about a lot of these different stupid that sometimes can get intense fights mm-hmm. that we have with our significant others, and it's very normal, very healthy to have. Um, but I'm wondering if after these arguments, you ladies have ever like. Um, gone out of your way to prove a point or the other partner has or if you've been like petty about kind of the repeated argument. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm only telling the story because he's like, you could tell the story. I get it. I was being a little petty. So he was being petty. So this story revolves imaginary dog. Okay, so we, Ray and I were watching Marley and Me and I love Marley and Me. It makes you sad. And Ray has expressed to me, he's like, my dream is to own a German Shepherd. I want a German Shepherd dog. That's my dream to have a dog. And I was like, and I was like, ooh, a German Shepherd, a big dog. It's shat, it sheds and all this stuff. And for me, like, I never really grew up having a dog. I'm open to having one. But, like, I think for me in my head, I was like, okay, if we, if we want to get a dog together, can it be a breed that maybe we both agree on? Mm. You know, because I like my house clean. I don't like German Shepherds shed. They shed a lot. lot. You know, like, can we get a hypoallergenic dog, whatever? And so after watching Marley, I was like, that's such a good film. A golden retriever so nice, whatever. And he's like, yeah, but German Shepherds so nice. I was like, yeah, they're cute. I don't know. Dude, golden retrievers sheds a lot. I know, crap. But they're, they're, they're <laughs> definitely golden, golden retrievers, like one of my dream dogs, too. But I never like thought of having a German Shepherd because I always like, oh, they're so big. And like, I, I like golden retrievers are huge. <laughs> you know, I don't know how I'm saying right now. <laughs> but uh, I just never expected like to own that breed yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I think when I was saying like when, when Ray was like, oh, a golden like, a German Shepherd. And I was like, yeah, you know, we'll see, you know. And then I think at one point, like I kept saying these kind of comments. He could like showing me videos. And at one point I was like. Uh, and then he was like, why are you putting this down? Like, why do you keep putting mm. this idea down? Why can't I have a German shepherd? Why can't I have it? And I was just like, and I literally was getting ready for Ben. I was like, what the f-? I remember, I remember <laughs> thinking like, what the F are we fighting about right now? And I was the like, the imaginary dog that and we're like, going to get I was maybe like, in 20 years. I was like, the only dog that exists in this room is my stuffed dog. Yeah. And I was like, what are we fighting about right now? And I think it boiled down to he was like, why are you crushing my dream of wanting this dog, of, mm-hmm. of, of this? And I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay, acknowledge that. Like, I'm not saying we can't own one. But I think for me, I'm thinking like, this is a discussion, like, responsible, because it, it became like, it's a responsibility. He's like, mm. and he was saying at one point, he was like, you're acting like I can't, I don't have the responsibility to, to own a dog to take care of. It. I was like, I'm not saying you don't. I'm saying this is a teamwork thing that if we're living mm. together and we have a dog vacuuming, he's, the dog's in a shed. Like, this is stuff I have to also adjust to. I'm saying you're not responsible. I'm just saying this is an adjustment for both of us. But I think it, it, it just ultimately boiled down to me crushing his dream of having a German Shepherd. Next morning, he was like, yeah, I'm sorry I went so hard about the German Shepherd. <laughs> I think I just really like wanted to like prove a point or like show mm. that this is something I've always thought about. I didn't want yeah. you to discredit that. So I was like, yeah. understood. But the next morning I was like, I ever how now I can laugh at me like, what we're fighting about an imaginary damn dog that we don't have yet. But acknowledge. So that that was my story. I think one of the that's like an argument where you see longevity with a person. And so when mm, someone kind of shuts true. down something yeah. that you've always like imagine if you've always wanted a, a wedding a certain way. I know. Imagine mm. if he was also like no, That's true. Okay. Well, we don't need to. I like how you placed it that way. I was like, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, dude. He really wants a German Shepherd. Yeah. Like it's just like oh. big dream. I was like, oh we'll get one. Yeah. It's one of those things where you're like, Yeah, 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 until until the day of then you're like, No. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I mean open to it. But anyways, do you do you both have any? 
Um, I have what I feel like we're usually not very petty with yeah. our arguments. We're we're really not. But if anything, we like to joke about arguments afterwards, and it can mm. come off as petty. Mm. So there was one incident <laughs> recently where I was um, Philip had come home at 10 p.m. I was like, okay, I'll help you make food because he was so tired. So I went to get some frozen dumplings, and as you do when you cook frozen dumplings, you take out your pan, you put oil in, and then you kind of like pour the frozen dumplings in it, right? So. I was doing it pretty haphazardly because it was late and I just wanted to get it done. And I was just going to let the dumpling start cooking wherever it lay, right? So it was Mm. on the bottom, it was on the side. And I tend to like my dumplings pan fried on two sides because I like Mm. the crispy skin. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to just start cooking it. And he comes running over and he's just like, what are you doing? (laughs) Why are you cooking it that way? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm cooking food for you. Be yeah. grateful that I am making food for you. He's like, well, this is not like, why is it all over? Like lopsided, falling <laughs> over. Like, why are the dumplings not sitting on the bottom? And I was like, because I want to cook it on both sides. I want to make it extra crispy for you. And he was just not having it. He thinks that I can't cook dumplings. I'm like, I've cooked dumplings many, many times in the past where it's just the bottom pan fried and you pour water in and then you close the cover and you steam it. Like, I know how to cook dumplings. Yeah, yeah. And he was just like, are you sure? I was like, bitch. Uh, that, like, got me really annoyed. And later on, he apologized. He was like, okay, I get it. You were doing something nice for me. And I was being very particular mm-hmm. about things. But he he also said that if I'm doing something that can be done better, I would want you to tell me. Mm. So basically, he was trying to approach me d- by sharing how he could have done it better, which I get. But I was like, time and place, dude. Like, it's 10 p.m. Yeah, it's yeah, late yeah. and you just need some food in you. The pettiness comes up when the next day he was cooking Chinese food and making stir fry. <laughs> and he, he brings food to the table. And I'm just like, hmm, that <laughs> chicken is sliced weird. That <laughs> looks- <laughs> Because <laughs> there's some, like little scraps and then there's like sliced pieces and then the broccoli he had minced garlic in there which was like all fall into the bottom like hmm, the garlic could be sliced instead of minced <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay I get it like yes those could be done better he's like I agree with you and then I was like hmm. so that's where my penny mm. side sometimes comes in but it's just us being able to joke and laugh yeah. about yeah, yeah, arguments yeah. after the fact it's never yeah. petty for like actual petty sake it's more just like let's let's laugh about it especially if you're sorry. I can make fun of you about it later Mm, on. That's funny. I like how in both of your examples, like, it came out afterwards that they both addressed, like, hey, I'm sorry. I know that that was, you know, like, Mm -hmm. so usually it's like, obviously, like, when you have, when you're in the moment of the argument, it's very different. Mm -hmm. But usually it's like the next day you have some time to think about it and you're like, okay, I'm sorry. Right. So it's a good thing that they came around. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about how sometimes these stupid fights can get a little heated, Mm -hmm. right? When you know that it's getting heated and you're trying to calm things down, do you have any tips, I guess, for helping a situation not get escalated to, like, be out of control? Mm -hmm. If it's just, like, lighthearted bickering, you're kind of fighting and it's, like, stupid and you're, like, but then it's, like, heating up and it's getting, Mm. like, more heated. How do you cool it down? I feel like you might have more, like, funnier – because you do that with us. I think for me and Ray, it's more, like, there are moments where he was, like, I'm, I don't want to talk about it anymore. And I, instead of me pressing him, I'm like, all right, just let it go. Because mm-hmm. I think sometimes we just need to step away. Basically then, like knowing. Knowing when to yeah, just yeah. stop. And yeah. then I think for me, I'm always like, I need affection afterwards. I was like, I don't want to end it like we're done. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm yeah, always yeah, asking for like, give me a hug or something. Like I need to feel like we're fine. So yeah. I, nothing like, I don't have a distinct thing yet though. We have many. I think for us, one of the main things is that we talk about things beforehand. So it never gets to a point where it needs to get heated. Mm-hmm. And with Philip and I, we are very transparent and sometimes even it might feel petty but we talk about everything and we don't hold Mm. anything back so even as a a quick example like recently i noticed that whenever we're at larger gatherings and uh we have our son there i am the one that generally goes and feeds my son first Mm -hmm. and i will be feeding him and not eating and Mm -hmm. there was one moment where we got wing wing stop and philip was just sitting next to me and he was eating his wings he's like "Mm, this one's so yummy and i looked over at him i'm like Mmm, that one looks so yummy because I didn't have time to eat yeah. and the yeah, wings yeah. were hot and the wings were getting cold. And, mm. and there was a moment where um, I, I felt something. Yeah. And so afterwards, immediately afterwards, after we had left, I said, hey, I have something to share. And, you know, you didn't do anything wrong, but I just want to make sure that this doesn't build up to become a thing in mm. the future. So I asked him, you know, in the future, I, I, and I love feeding our son. It's just sometimes when I see those damn wings, I'm like, I want those immediately. Yeah. I said, in the future, maybe you can eat a little bit faster. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I thought he was like, Can I you like how she me? jumped to the proposed solution. <laughs> I mean, so he does. He's because he, like there was there were moments throughout the dinner, like, oh, Helen, are you eating? Are you whatever? And he would put food on my plate, but it's different because I want to pick up the wing and eat it myself, you know, yeah, instead yeah. of like, you putting pieces of meat on my plate. <laughs> so. So next time, can you, you know, eat a little faster and then switch with me? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. he's very much open to that. And that's an example of like, we talk about things before it gets mm-hmm. heated. I will say the dancing moment was an example of something we couldn't talk about because I didn't anticipate me, you know, feeling that, feeling that yeah, deeply yeah, yeah. about something like that. So in those moments, how we handle it is usually if I feel something, we always say approach the other person in a very calm manner Mm -hmm. because if you were to approach someone as if you're attacking them it's human nature to feel put your defenses up and just be like okay you're attacking me what did i do wrong yeah yeah right so in the moment of the dancing situation i didn't approach him correctly i was drunk (laughs) and the other thing then that we say is that the person who is receiving the comment try and be the bigger person and know that this person is coming from a place of hurt so they're not feeling good for a reason try to be calm that doesn't happen all the time because yeah we will get heated um because yeah the other person might feel attacked or you know one part of this solution and these steps isn't working out but in general i think the dancing one was the only argument we had this whole past year Mm. and i will say the first few years that we were together was very tumultuous because i am the type of person that is non-confrontational and he Mm. is someone that loves to put everything on the table talk about it Mm. not go to sleep angry so it's kind of like love language where you, it's good to know each other's love language, yeah. but I think it's important to know each other's argument, mm, language, yeah. and style mm-hmm. as well so that you can you can calibrate and figure out like how how to work things out for each other. Yeah, yeah. You know, I so I think it takes – it took us years to figure out what worked for us, but those are sort of the steps. Talk beforehand, mm-hmm. person approaching, try to remain calm, person receiving it, don't play victim, you know, know that this person is coming from a hurt place, try to be the bigger person. Um, But those are our steps. Mm. Those are super helpful. And the thing that stood out to me is like when you approached him, you said, hey, the first thing you said was, I'm not angry. Like Mm -hmm. this is not a fight. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that automatically makes it a conversation and not like a fight. And it actually reminds me like just very – like this morning, uh, Eugene and I had a little bit of like a tiff. Just – it was like early morning, lots going on. And um, he – I was getting like really flustered. And the first thing he said was, hey – I'm not angry. I don't know why you're getting flustered. It's okay. But let's just next time, like, let's talk through or, like, mm. let's do this a little bit differently. And yeah. that automatically put me in, like, a better place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Mel, like, I need a kind of, like, physical touch to close yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. So whenever we're, like, have anything um, that's, like, kind of contentious, at the end, I was like, I'll touch him or he'll touch or we'll, like, go in for a hug. And that's kind of like a everything's okay. Like, mm. don't worry. Even if the problem is not resolved, it's like, hey, I'm okay. We can talk about this later. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. These are really great tips. Well, we hope this episode was relatable and hopefully funny <laughs> and useful for some of you out there. We are huge believers that in any relationship, it's, it's good to have a healthy amount of arguing. Because I think in those moments, that's when you really learn about each other. Mm-hmm. You learn what each person you know, values mm-hmm. and also you learn how to compromise so that you can have a relationship that you're really invested in and you're compromising and choosing one another yeah so arguments we see as healthy they're pretty funny too after the fact hopefully you all can laugh about it as well but if you have gone into an argument with your significant other recently let us know in the comments of our instagram post at asian boss girl we would love to hear about it and laugh about it along with you and that wraps this episode we are asian boss girl on all of the social channels all of your podcasting platforms go ahead and give us a rating and review if you find us we truly appreciate it and it really helps us out We are also now, in addition to our Thursday main episode releases, releasing our mini show episodes on Tuesdays. So Helen's show. Spill the baby tea. Mel's. No dumb questions with Mel. And Living Well with Janet. So check those out on Tuesday as well. And with that, we'll catch you all on the next episode. Bye. Bye.